Mango. All right, we're live. We're live. Okay. <laughs> this is so awkward. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. So so for for today, guys, um, we're gonna talk about quality. I know Robbie wasn't here yesterday, and neither was Logan. But we did run into some quality problems with our, our, our products. And we do our own nation, our product. <laughs> oh, it, it, it was messed up, okay? We've, we've, had, quality, we've had quality product, our problems kind of throughout, but it, it came to a head in the, in the welding area. Um, okay. And, and uh, Jeez, we, we, we noticed some squaring and some parallel problems. Okay, which, listen, Robbie, I was the one squaring it up. Hey, we're recording it and it wasn't used like it was good. Obviously it wasn't right. Good. Is this why I told Mr. Siddick he should have just fired the welds? Sorry. I think under the problem, I don't think welds should be like, so welds were good. And we just had the people who tacked together didn't tack together. Exactly. So we'll, we'll talk about the welds, like the, we can call it tax welds, whatever, but we'll, we'll talk about the, the tacking welding in a, in a little bit. Just set. Like, so that was set. Right. It was just the way it was put together before it was not. But no fixture took generation off the internet. Fixture and uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do well. Awesome. We'll do like well like that. How's that? Well, okay. well ish. That's the compromise. That's it. Yes. I know, like we're really great for it. Yeah, we have a little like a fake nose. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we're like. It's okay. It's okay. They, they 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 want you to be engaged, right? They want you to be um, engaged in the class. So, anyways, so quality. We 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 came across all sorts of issues with quality, and I'm telling you, this little project here. It is as real life as it comes, where we start from nothing and we have to produce a product that eventually is going to be sold. And that is the, the life and times of manufacturing. That's the life and times of a machinist or a welder. Eventually, ultimately, somebody's going to be buying the parts you make in there or the welds you produce out, out in the real world. This is, is it's a microchasm of, of what goes on, but it's certainly, we've seen the pitfalls and shortcomings of, of, of what we've been able to produce. Yes, Rob. How, how does this connect to your uh, prison thing? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, anyways. So, so quality control. Um, in, in, the, in the 80s, in, in the 80s, Ford came up with a marketing slogan called, and it, it, it was quality's job one. And they ran with that marketing platform, marketing slogan for like a decade. And so, remember how early on when we started this project, we decided that we'd kind of mimic the Henry Ford model of instead of you guys going to the parts, the parts would come to you. And that, that model has been working. We've produced a lot of fire jacks and a lot of good fire jacks. But in amongst producing good fire jacks, we've created some duds, and um, that, that's something that, that needs to be identified, and the biggest, or the, the best way to identify a quality problem is long before it's in the automotive shop getting painted. And what's been great about this, this experiment or this project is you guys have noticed issues, and you know, it's easy to point fingers when, when there's a problem, and finger pointing in manufacturing is very, very common. It's, it's, it's totally normal. But in, 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 the, in the real world, to stop the finger pointing, the manufacturers and tier one, tier two, tier three, tier three um, producers, they have paper documentation that follows around their products. Yes, Robbie? I, I think I know how we have to solve this problem with uh, the finger pointing. Yeah, huh? I think we need to fire the person making the problem. I think we can do welders. 
So, so what we're gonna what, what, what we're gonna do today after or after this is we are gonna switch the welders. We're we're gonna get the guys running the lathes to now start running the uh, the welders, just so you can feel the pain of what the welders and 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 uh, the tacking and the fixturing. Uh, just so you, you have, a, have a better idea of the whole process and then the finger pointing will stop because how can you point, point a finger at somebody who has experienced you know, the, uh, the cumbersome nature of, of tacking these things up. So, anyways, I digress. He's amazing. What's that? Um, so, I brought in a couple examples of a really quality fire jack. It's square, it's parallel, it's perpendicular, the welds have been cleaned up, there's no pieces of wire, there's no inclusions. This is, this is perfect. And what's amazing about this is at the end of the class we, we, we go through and we kind of look at it and we bring them upstairs, but it's a real challenge if this part was either A to be heat treated and certainly when it goes to automotive to get painted, it's, re it's really difficult, it's time consuming and it's, and, and it's expensive to bring this back and rejig it, re-weld it. If, if there was some slag on here to clean it up after it's been painted and it's ready to go. So uh, when, when Logan was, uh, was running the saw, for example, Logan would, would double check the length, he'd set up that, that stock, but he didn't cut up 48 different lengths of material. He, he made sure he kind of took a look and, and the saw was, maybe it was every four or five parts or whatever, but he made sure that the, the stock on the saw didn't, didn't, didn't move. And you know, the project was starting off on, on, on the wrong foot as it left the saw. And then of course, um, when, when Chase, Received the material on the lathes. Um, there, there was a, a quality checkpoint there where he made sure that each shoulder was done, each part was to length, to diameter. Because we, I'm sure you guys experienced trying to fit that die on a piece of material that hasn't been turned down. So it's, it's a real challenge. So that was checkpoint number two. Um, then we went to the the fixture and. Early on in this project, we decided that the best way to weld these things and give you guys a higher chance of success to make them square and parallel, we, did, we designed and built that fixture, right? So then we're kind of eliminating another quality problem. Now, what happened yesterday with the, 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 part, the part that got, that, that got made out of square, there was a few variables, but I'll get to that. Um, so we made that fixture to eliminate any type of human error. So, we, we developed a process where you know you put put the part in, make sure it's sitting snug, tack it twice, tack it once, and if it kind of moved, you can bend it back and tack it again, and then we're left with a, a tacked part. So that was checkpoint three. The problem we ran into yesterday was, and it was great that, that Mason noticed it, one of the parts that we made was tacked, and it was tacked kind of crooked, a little cockeyed. And it, it, was a, it was a great catch by him because the minute Brandon kind of lays the coals on this thing, it's done. And, and what was great was he was able to take to the grinding, the, the grinding area, uh, grind off those tacks, and re-weld it. And so that was checkpoint four. Um, from there, we can, uh, and I brought, I brought an example here of one that's, I think it was the one we did yesterday, where not only is it crooked, we missed a weld, um, it hasn't been wire brushed, it hasn't been cleaned up, and so if this was to go to automotive and get painted, there'd be some quality issues. Now to add a, add, add a final weld on this joint isn't a big deal. You're not gonna burn through paint, it's not gonna have to go from paint back to, uh, to welding, to, to finishing and, and repaint it again. So we, if we catch these, uh, the, these minor flaws, minor quality issues early on, 
they're way easier to fix. And so Alex, I was talking to him as he walked in today, Alex was center punching his train wheels. And he, he mentioned to me yesterday that he, he center punched, the, the punch moved and, and it was in the wrong spot. All fine and dandy, it, can, it was quickly, quickly addressed and we fixed it, we put the, the center punch in the, in the proper spot. But had he not addressed that quality issue and ran, ran the drill through that piece of material, it'd probably be scrap. And we went from scrap to saved. And on a massive scale, guys, like um, that piece of aluminum is probably, I don't know, a couple dollars that, that you might have made a mistake. But if you're, if you're making, for example, a, a television and the quality issues on the circuit board that you have in that television, if there's a, if there's a problem with cold solder joints or something in the manufacturing process and it gets to the, the, the assembly plan and, and it's getting put together and the grand moment where they try to test that television and it fails, well, had the quality of that small circuit board been addressed long before it got all completely assembled, the same with car parts, had it got addressed early, the, the repair would have been quicker and far, far cheaper, far cheaper than disassembling the, the television and starting, uh, starting from square one to actually produce a working product. And you, you see and you hear about quality problems on the news and you see large kind of sanctioned cars that have quality problems and they can't sell them and they just sort of sit around until they have um, the proper part. Those, type of, those types of quality um, recalls are super, super, super expensive. And so on a micro scale, it's super annoying and time consuming. On a macro scale, recalls and quality problems. First off, there's potential injury or death or whatever, but certainly um, they, are, they are expensive to fix as a part progresses through the manufacturing process. And, and again, you guys, did, you guys are doing a good job. You guys are, are, are identifying these problems. But uh, um, we do have to make sure that when these parts leave this shop to paint, they have to be perfect. They have to be ready to go. And, and Simon mentioned uh, he works at Princess Auto. And a colleague of mine years ago, I, I, when I was an apprentice, I'd show him the part that I was working on, and it would have some mistakes and whatever, and he, he'd say, if it, was on, if it was on a shelf, would you buy it? And Princess Auto is a great example of their stuff is very shiny, it looks really cool, it's, it, it's, it's usually painted well, really looks good. And so, and I think I mentioned this to you guys when we started this project. I want you guys to, be, to look at these things and think, yeah, I'd buy that. Because ultimately that's what somebody's going to be doing. Somebody's going to be purchasing these and, you, and you, they want that, that, that feeling of they're buying something quality. Obviously it's made by students, which is great. But certainly they want it to last and they don't want it to, uh, to, uh, to fail the first fire they have. Um, so, the problems that we had with, uh, with the quality, the length, the parallel, the threads, the square, the fixturing, the welds, with a, with a little, uh, a little uh, question mark. But you guys are looking at this um, for today. We, I do want you guys to switch. I want you guys, the welders, to start running the, uh, the machines and the, the, the lathe operators to start running the welders. And uh, yeah, any questions on, on what, what we covered today? No? Okay.